all to the studio. Uh-oh, Johanna's coming. Or hide the croissants. Uh, uh, and the chocolate. And uh, let's see, what else? Uh, uh, hmm. Okay, that's, that's probably good for right now. I'll hide them over. Are those croissants, June? Oh, no. No, no. We don't have croissants here. <laughs> you better not. The reason we did that, Selena, is, is because croissant. I always want them, and she's the kindest, kindest engineer who will bring them as a, you know, a gesture to her narrator and client, and I will eat them and then record horribly all day and blame every mistake on the croissant because of the butter or whatever milk product is in it that makes me have sticky mouth. So there they are, the evil croissant. There they are. <laughs> and they're far away from me. So I'm setting up. What I usually do is come into the studio and set everything up and sit for about 15 minutes <laughs> before I start. But first, let's show you June and how she's set up on the computer for the, for the session we're going to do today. So Johanna is really special. She's, she's right on. So she gets her own special setting here on the board. Um, she is number nine, Johanna Parker. So not everybody gets a special setting in the board, but she does. And uh, so we're running on Pro Tools, and uh, uh, we have some tricks in here, a little DSer, but mostly, and uh, here's Johanna's equalization right there. <laughs> That's her own special EQ. So she's, she's, um, she gets a VIP treatment. And she has a particular yeah. voice that needs DSing. <laughs> <laughs> and all sorts of D, D everythinging. All no, right. So Johanna's great. So this is before when we just get started. Cool. Yeah. And off we go into the booth. The cave. So. I have a chair and a music stand. First, I'm going to put the slippers on. <laughs> Comfort is key because you read for long stretches at a time. And that's why I've got all these pillows here. And this is an incredibly uh, expensive and wonderful mic that we've got going here. June could probably tell you a lot more about it. Normally I wear headphones for many of the books, but today, so that we can actually hear each other and you guys can hear June, I'm going to not use them. Is that right, June? That sounds great. Okay, see, we can hear her. And normally I would shut the door, but I won't today. It's <laughs> 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 for the sound. So... Yeah, normally we'd shut the door. <laughs> so the potions are as such. I've got the eye drops in case my eyes get dry. And um, the most important is the lip stuff. But you know what the really most important is? Is the script, <laughs> which I forgot. It's out there. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Got the script. Today, we're going to do a little piece just to show you an example of a piece that we spent a lot of time working on. It was a section, a big chunk I did from a book called Let the Great World Spin by Colin McCann. He's, it won the National Book Award. It was an incredible, beautiful book and I got to read a section of it. And we spent, I think, a half an hour to maybe 40 minutes on the last section, and especially the last line. And so I'm going to give you a, just a little example of how methodical we can be uh, about just working on these, these, uh, these words. So here we go. June's going to try to get a level for me, and she'll explain all that. And I'll okay. do my lips. So we're going to get a level first. Mm -hmm. Outside, there were two tickets in the window of the Pontiac, a parking fine and one for a smashed headlight. It was enough to almost knock me sideways. Before I drove home to the cabin, I went back to the window of the bar and shaded my eyes against the glass, looked in. That's great. Thank um, you. Can I get you to uh, just come in a tiny baby step? Yes. Siren was at the counter, his arms folded and his chin on his wrist, talking to the bartender. Oh, yeah. Cool. That's good. Great. Okay. Stand by. And we 
are rolling. Outside, there were two tickets in the window of the Pontiac, a parking fine and one for a smashed headlight. It was enough to almost knock me sideways. Before I drove up, <laughs> Hannah, did you sneak a croissant in there? Nope, I'm screwing up anyway. <laughs> Shockingly. Yeah, I'm shocked. <laughs> okay, here we go. There is a fear of love. There are rocks deep enough in this earth that no matter what the rupture, they will never see the surface. There is, I think, I'm going to go back on that. I think a fear of love. There is a fear of love. There is a fear of love. Oh, that's really good. Is that the like one? That one? Okay. Okay. All right. So, if you're ready to rock, we are rolling. Engineers POV. Quickly, I turned away. There are rocks deep enough in this earth that no matter what the rupture, they will never see the surface. There is, I think, a fear of love. There is a fear of love. I think you uh, rushed that first part, Johanna. Thank you. There are rocks deep enough in this earth that no matter what the rupture, they will never see the surface. There is, I think, a fear of love. There is a fear of love. No. There is, I think, a fear of love. There is a fear of love. I hate both of those. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Let me, let me go back a little bit here. One more time. Yeah, what can we do with this? Do it better? Well, that, that, would, that would be good. Let's do it better. Okay. Okay. Quickly, I turned away. There are rocks deep enough in this earth that no matter what the rupture, they will never see the surface. There is, I think, a fear of love. There is a fear of love. There is, I think, a fear of love. There is a fear of love. Hmm. That was kind of good. All right. You like that one? For now. <laughs> okay. So you deserve a croissant and maybe a piece of chocolate. <laughs> Time for some chocolate and croissant. <laughs> so that's it for the studio, for the booth. Um, I think we can cut out now. Thanks for, thanks for watching. My just reward. <laughs> thanks, dude. No problem. <laughs>